Hello, I'm Dan West, Livonia Chamber of Commerce, and this is our latest cyber edition of Cityscape, our regular series of video chats about people, places, and ideas that impact Livonia. As we get closer to the time more businesses can resume operations, we hope to prepare you with helpful information that prepares you for a different marketplace. With that goal in mind, we are pleased to welcome former Michigan Lieutenant Governor Brian Kelly, who is now the president of the Small Business Association of Michigan. Brian, thank you for joining us today. Pleasure to be with you. Thanks for, for having me. I look forward to our discussion. What are some of the biggest points you'd like to make to business, small business people when it comes to preparing for restarting? Restarting your business is, uh, there's a lot of different aspects to it. And I think it would be a mistake just to focus on compliance. So compliance is going to be a big job. You're going to have to do things that you haven't done before. But it's also important to win over the confidence of your employees and the confidence of your customers if you're going to be successful in the future. Just because the government says, hey, this industry, this activity is green-lighted to go, doesn't mean that, you're in, that your employees are going to feel confident in moving forward. And that's, uh, and that's something that we want our, our business owners to pay special attention to is how you... It, Part of, your, part of your plan for reopening should include how you win the confidence and the trust of those two key stakeholders of your employees and your customers. And there's not a simple or a single answer to that. It depends on industry, it depends on, um, on, the, on the risk tolerance of your, and, the, and some of the risk factors of your, of your employees and the type of work that you do. But it's uh, it's going to be very very important, and so um, it it makes sense to have part of your plan. You know, you're working on compliance. Communication is part of that as well. Um, with the recommendations requirements for people to wear masks when going into stores and offices and buildings as such, we are hearing about more confrontational incidents involving people being asked to wear a mask. How can a business person best handle the situation where a customer? is um, not easy about wearing a mask. Well, I, I, I'm a big fan of communication and, and whatever your requirements are going to be, um, and by the way, you are not required to police masks in your place of business. A lot of places though, because they want other customers to feel safe there, they are. The government doesn't say that you have to, um, that's why you still see, um, and there's no penalties for an, indiv for an individual person not wearing a mask so, um, or a face covering. So this is, uh, this is one of those gray areas where a business has to make a judgment call. Do I want to enforce this or not? So I would be a big fan of trying to project ahead of time that this is a requirement to come into my business. Make sure that people see um, whatever communication that you have that you're open that you're also communicating as part of it that that's an expectation that you have for your business. For, so, for that, so that those that don't want to wear a face mask, they don't show up at your door in the first place. As opposed to them showing up, being surprised like, oh no, there, you know, here's this rule and, um, and, and uh, I don't want to do it for some reason and now you've got a confrontation. Tell them ahead of time so they can avoid it in the first place. Really, it's going to be the comfort level of, of your business, but I think it would make a lot of sense for a business owner to think of this in terms of what environment are you trying to create inside your space and make sure that the behavior of your customers does not undermine the, uh, the, the broader message that you're trying to send to the community, your customers, and especially your employees about provi providing a safe environment. Um, can you uh, walk us through how a business can develop risk mitigation strategies for their operations? So you, when you see this um, discussed more broadly, there's all this attention on face coverings or face masks. And it's not that they don't have a, um, an important role to play, but I, I think it would be a mistake to look at that as your primary form of risk mitigation. I think of risk mitigation as being um, a series of layered uh, steps or layered pillars to, um, to building a strong mitigation plan. And before you get to personal protective equipment, PPE, first it's health screening. Health screening is going to be required. If you're already open, you know this. If you're not opened yet, 
um, you're going to find out when the rules for your reopening come. So you do health screening. Um, that might include taking temperatures of people. Some other rules require temperatures. Um, some other rules that um, don't. Um, they uh, they were they just have a questionnaire uh, that employees uh, screen through just um, symptoms. Now um, the next part is distancing. So you got health screening first. Second would be distancing. People talk about that like, hey, keep six feet apart. And yes, six feet is the generally accepted standard. But I think it would be a mistake to just say, hey, employees, do what you normally do. Try to stay six feet apart. That would not work as well as trying to engineer distance into your workflow in the first place. So distancing would be that second step. Health screening, distancing, third line of defense, third filter or net would be sanitation. Two primary forms of sanitation. Sanitation of the person, washing your hands, using hand sanitizer. Washing your hands, by the way, is superior to hand sanitizer. So part of sanitation is the person. The other part of sanitation are the, the frequently touched or trafficked areas in a business. So gone are the days of, hey, the janitorial um, contractor will come in at night and clean the place and we're good to go. Um, having a regular disinfectant or sanitation schedule for doorknobs and commonly touched uh, service surfaces, light switches and things like that. But that's the third line of defense, which is, san is sanitation. So sometimes you have some surfaces that it's just unavoidable that more people will come in contact with them. Then the final line of defense, the last part of it is personal protective equipment. Now, that face covering, think of the job you're asking the face covering to, to, um, to, to deal with. That is when somebody got through health screening and distancing didn't keep them far enough apart and sanitation of hands and, and uh, commonly touched services. Like there's so many failure points that would have to happen before the mask would have to catch it at the end. And, uh, and so that's why I think it makes sense to look at your PPE, your personal protective equipment as the last line of defense. Important, still got to do it but don't expect that to carry the load because it's not as effective as those other uh, strategies, especially when you layer them one on top of another. Awesome. Well, Brian, I thank you very much for your time and your expertise today. My pleasure. Great to be with you. We appreciate everyone for watching this edition of Cityscape and we'll see everybody next time.